Hello students today we are going to study a very important chapter that is basic mechanisms in the process of inflammation and repair this chapter will be covered in a total of four parts of which today we are going to study the first part so as i said we are going to study this chapter in a total of four parts of which in the first part we will learn what is inflammation what is exactly the definition of inflammation what are the clinical signs of inflammation and the different types of inflammation in the second part we will learn the different mechanisms of inflammation in the third part we will learn about the mediators of inflammation and in the final part we will learn about basic principles of wound healing in the skin and the pathophysiology of atherosclerosis so now let us begin with the first part so how can you define inflammation so inflammation is basically the body's immune system's reaction to an irritant so whenever there is a foreign body in the which enters then in that case the response which is given by our body is in form of inflammation now this irritant or this foreign body could be either in the form of a pathogen like a virus or a bacteria it could be some external injury like scrape it could be because of some chemical or radiation or it could be because of some medical condition like for example inflammatory bowel disease or rheumatoid arthritis so how does an inflamed area look like so an inflamed area will be characterized by the presence of swelling in that particular region there will be pain it will be highly sensitive and there will be redness at that particular region so that is what is a characteristic of a inflammation now what are the clinical signs of inflammation let us understand that so there are a total of five clinical signs of inflammation they are also known as the dolor the rubor the calor tumor and functio lisa so let us first understand what is dolor so dolor means pain now there is high level of sensitivity and stiffness in the area that is inflamed so it is too sensitive to even touch so you will experience pain at that particular region the next important sign is heat which is also called as calor now this is a latin term that is because you have more heat in that particular region is because there is more blood flow to the inflamed region so if you ever have a part of the body where there is swelling redness you if you touch that part you will see that it is much more warm as compared to the other parts of the body so that is because there is more blood flow to that particular region the next important clinical sign that you will observe is redness which is also called rubor the latin term and that's simply because more blood vessels of this area are filled with blood so the blood vessels in this region are filled with more blood than usual and because of that excess of blood that redness appears we also find swelling at the inflamed site which is referred to by the latin term tumor and which is due to the fluid which is accumulating in the tissues so because of that the swelling is seen and the next important sign is loss of function and which is also called as functio lisa now if you for an example look at an inflamed joint you will find that the joint that is inflamed for example in case of rheumatoid arthritis you may not be able to walk properly the joint may not be able to move properly so there is a loss of function so these five things are the clinical signs of inflammation in addition to the clinical signs you will also observe some additional signs for inflammation for example sickness exhaustion and fever which you will commonly observe now what you will find is also there is there are increased number of cells of the immune system and because of that what you will find is that the chances of sepsis are also more if the inflammation is of severe degree now sepsis is nothing but an overwhelming response to an infection 
So this mainly occurs because when the body or rather when the immune system is unable to remove an infection locally, then in that case a large number of bacteria, they suddenly enter the bloodstream and then what you have is an uh, overstimulated immune response and that overwhelming response to that infection is a condition called sepsis. You know, it can result in a multi-organ failure also, it can prove to be fatal. So it is a medical emergency. Now inflammation is of two types namely acute and chronic. So acute inflammation is the early response to an injury or a irritant. It typically lasts from two to six weeks. Whereas when we talk about chronic inflammation, the word itself chronic indicates that it is long term which lasts for a prolonged period of time. Now here prolonged is defined as ranging from several months to years. So for example when you have inflammation due to rheumatoid arthritis it would come under the category of chronic. Why? Because it would last for several months to several years. So what are the features of an acute inflammation that you will find which typically lasts for two to six weeks. So what you would find is there would be vascular changes. Now this vascular changes they include sudden increased blood flow to that particular region. Some inflammatory cells like for example neutrophils could be recruited at that particular site, the site of inflammation. There are number of mediators of inflammation which are locally involved like for example histamine, cytokines, bradykinins. So these are some of the features that you will find at the site of inflammation. Now if you have to study the etiology of acute inflammation, you must remember that acute inflammation could be caused by a variety of stimuli which could include infections with some virus or bacteria. It could be an immune reaction which could just start in response to some chemical or some radiation. It could be some blunt or penetrating response like for example if you have cut physical or chemical agents. It could be in response to burns, frostbite when the temperature is very low, in response to irradiation, caustic chemicals and when there is tissue necrosis or death of the tissue. So typically when you see myocardial infarction, so that region you will observe inflammation. So tissue necrosis is one of the reason for acute inflammation. The process of chronic inflammation lasts for several months to year. Now the extent of inflammation may vary depending on body's ability to repair and overcome the damage. So the more prolonged it takes, time it takes for wound healing, the more will be the inflammation at that particular site. So chronic inflammatory conditions have been leading cause of death. Like for example, some 3 out of 5 people die due to chronic inflammatory conditions which include ischemic heart disease. It also includes conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease. Now the different causes of inflammation for especially chronic inflammation include the failure to eliminate the agent that is causing inflammation. So for example in case of a tubercular bacteria the body may fail to eliminate the bacteria so in that case the inflammation may get prolonged resulting in a chronic inflammation. Next is then there is exposure to low level of a particular irritant which the body cannot remove. Like for example silica does, so by any enzyme or by any other process, if it is not eliminated then that inflammation may persist for a longer time and it may be a chronic inflammation. It could be because of some autoimmune disorder, for example the rheumatoid arthritis is one example. Then when you have recurrent episodes of acute inflammation that is occurring after every few days, then in that case over a period of time you it will develop into a chronic condition and when you have inflammatory and biochemical inducers present in the body, so overstimulation of the mediators of inflammation could also result in some chronic condition. So that's all for this session. In the next class we will learn about the pathophysiology and the mechanisms of inflammation and after that we will learn about the 
types of cells that are involved in inflammation. 